Let's see. How's your mixer doing? Hello, everybody. Tom Matuska and Brett Wingfield here for the Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company, Thursday afternoon live. And uh, this is a better day, let me tell you, because oh the sun God. is shining. And I think they said this is the first day it has been above zero. Yes. And I think it's a little bit more than above. It's, it, yeah. I didn't yes. look, but it's very pleasant out. And the sun shining and all that vitamin D and stuff that people get depressed about. Um, it's, it's, man, it held out about as long as it could because we had people kind of going funny around here. And uh, so it's pretty nice, and I think tomorrow's supposed to be nicer, and next week we're on the uphill slide to summer. We're so, going to get above freezing. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're just excited about the zero. I thought that was above freezing. Um, and uh, I hope that uh, you... Follow along and type in any questions that you have, text in any questions for us, and we'll try to uh, show you a few tips and tricks. Yeah. And uh, we've done a lot of different things in the, the past few weeks, and this week we're going to move on to um, skimming a crappie. And that yeah. seems to be one of the most problematic things any taxidermist does, and people who like fish. Um, don't like fish so much after they do a crappie. A crappie is an extremely fragile fish scale-wise, very easy to lose scales, um, and there's a few things that you can do to make your job easier. Mm -hmm. I always tell the story, the first crappie I did when I got out of school, um, I started skinning him and I, lost, I started losing so many scales, and I called up almost in tears the mm -hmm. instructor and I said, I'm losing so many scales, what am I going to do? And he said, you're going to have to scale it. And I go, scale him? I don't want to lose any more scales. He said, scale him. That's the only chance you got. And uh, so I scaled him according to directions and managed to mount that fish. Oh my gosh. And looking yeah. back, that was 40 years ago, and it couldn't have been very good, but it must have gotten me out of trouble because um, the customer picked it up, and I think... Um, seemed to be happy with it, and uh, at a dollar an inch, I don't know how they could be unhappy, <laughs> but uh, um, seemed to be happy with it. But that was my first experience, and when we're teaching students, we always, I always say, when you are skinning fish, and skinning fish can be a problem for you, um, get yourself a bucket of crappies and start skinning and you're gonna need them for your showroom for color. They make great displays, they're beautiful fish, and your first one might not be so good, your second one might not be, but eventually you're gonna get the hang of how to bend the skin and how to uh, run your fleshing tools on that crappie skin, and they're gonna get better and better and better. And for some of you, it might be your first or second crappie, and for some of you, um, it might be your 15th crappie, <laughs> but don't give up until you can skin crappies without losing scales. And um, we rarely do anything when we skin a crappie anymore um, as far as preservation of the scales. We can take a crappie and skin them like any other fish, but both you and I have skinned thousands of fish, of fish. and we know how to bend a fish and how to be careful. So with that kind of experience, you might not need these safeguards, but um, we do have a couple little tricks that are, are helpful. Um, I apologize for my hairdo today. Um, I have I have a big old tuft of hair you need gorilla glue. sticking up. I know. I was looking for Gorilla Glue. Um, I was feeding the dog today, and I leaned over to put food in the dog dish, and I came up really fast in the dark, and I hit my head on the corner of the cupboard, and I've done this for five years in this that dog dish in that location, never have I even come close to the <laughs> cupboard, and it even bled. But now, there's a lump, and my hair is sticking up. So we do need the Gorilla, gorilla glue. glue. So if you see this little tuft of skin, um, there's a little blem underneath. But <laughs> not that anybody stitches, cares. Your sewing's a little bit <laughs> off there. Um, okay, the first, um, first method I'm gonna show you, first, you can do a crappie and not do anything. Sure. And and if you're good at it, you're going to be just fine, not lose yep. any scales. We have all this. I always make the students a deal when they're um, doing this portion of the fish class. When we're doing crappies or white bass, white bass is another really mm -hmm. fragile fish. And 
as they're skinning them, I always say, if you can skin flesh and mount this fish and not lose any scales on the show side of the fish, I don't care what the back looks like. We're gonna cosmetically make the back good enough for the wall to yep. see. But um, if you can do the show side of the fish, not lose any scales, but get a $25 gift certificate down in the supply company. And uh, students we've had- only. That's students only. Students only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not, that's <laughs> not a challenge that's that we want point. tomorrow. <laughs> um, but we have people collect on that all the time. Oh, and I'm very happy um, to pay out because it shows me that they're, they're learning and they're yeah. learning how to bend the skin and not yeah. bend the skin and things like that. So, um, um, you're going to want to try a few of these different methods and as you, as you do, some are going to be too involved and too much of a hassle for you. Some will be a little bit easier and, uh, but whatever it takes to be able to skin that fish and fish, skin him, clean him, scrape him, um, mm -hmm. mount him on a body. That's all we care about just so he looks good. Yeah. And a lot of people, there's a lot of tax firms that don't do crappies. There are. There's a lot there of are. taxidermists that charge a lot of money for a crappie. As well they should. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we? I don't uh, know. And we to do to. a fish like this, is, for us, it's just another fish. It's not a, it's yeah. not a big deal. Um, so I have a, a nice black crappie here, probably about a, what, 14-inch fish mm -hmm. maybe. And, mm -hmm. and you made a nice pattern for me. And before you do anything, let's have the pattern made. Yeah, um, it's going to be easier to do now rather than later. So you're going to do a, we're going to make a pattern. And when we make a pattern, we've gone through this whole pattern business with you before, but we like to have widths, heights, and circumferences. Um, here's a five eighths inch width up by the head. Here's an inch and a half through the cleathin bone. Here's a one and five eighths through the center of the body. So we have those width measurements and then we have height measurements and that four and a half inches here, um, five inches here, we have different height measurements. And then we like to also have circumferences. Um, and you can abbreviate these measurements as much as you want or add to them as much yep. as you want. Once this fish is skinned, um, there's no measuring anything. So, so all the background, you know, any of your backup backup yeah. reference is gone. So um, to have to have uh, good measurements is very, very helpful. We have in the past had customers come in and think their fish was either, I've never had a customer say my fish is bigger than what he was, never. Yeah. But they do occasionally come back and say, my fish is smaller than what it was. And mm -hmm. we have pulled out patterns like this and shown them. Yeah. You know, that's just part of this business. I always say, um, I have a phobia about being in the meat locker business and, and cutting meat for people, and they come in and say, um, hey, I only got 150 pounds of meat on a 300-pound side of beef. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. And that kind of makes you sick to your stomach, and when your customer comes in and say, hey, my crappie was a 40-inch crappie, and I'm only getting back a 15-inch crappie, you have backup. Yes. So that's kind of important. Okay, um, once the pattern is complete, we're going to store that. We'll put the person's name on it um, and just store that pattern. We're going to build a body later. And now this is, I guess I'd have to say, one of the most, would you say foolproof? Not foolproof, but most helpful Consistent. to me. Consistent, yeah. Yep. And we're going to take this crappie skin, the, the whole fish, and we I dry him off somewhere. I dry him off, get him kind of room temperature, and then I'm actually gonna paint this entire crappie with um, Elmer's glue. And, and while you do that, should I make a pattern over here? Sure. Of this one? Okay. And if you wanna describe as you do it, don't let me interrupt. No, you're good. I'm just gonna <clears throat> make a quick pattern so I can skin. When you're ready to skin, Okay, now this is just plain old Elmer's glue. Now, the reason we always say this is, to me, the most helpful thing you can do that'll help you skin a crappie 
um, is because it's going to form a barrier on those scales and hold the, hold the scales in place. But um, it is a hassle to have to do that. I've got Elmer's glue here. I'm going to dip my brush in it, just a cheap old chip brush, and I'm going to paint the entire crappie skin with Elmer's glue. Now the reason this is kind of a hassly way to do it is because this fish is cold and he's clammy and he has moisture in his skin, so it takes the Salmer's glue hours and hours and hours to dry. Now if you want, sometimes the Elmer's glue can wreak havoc on your fins. Um, I have one here that I'm going to show you that I actually wrapped the fins in um, a little bit of tissue paper and before I Elmer's glued him and that, that'll keep the fins in better shape. So I coat one whole side of the crappie. I'm going to flip him over, do the other side. Elmer's glue on this wet, clammy, cold fish is probably going to take I'd say four hours to dry. And I like to put on two coats. So when I came in this morning, the one I'm going to show you is I put on a coat right away at 8 o'clock this morning and I put him in front of the fan and just let him dangle and dry. And about noon, he would, the Elmer's glue was all dry and I, to be safe, like to give him a second coat. And so you have, you have one that you've been drying. Kind of like Paula Dean. Got it. That's cheating. Um, so I'm just going to take this crappie, and I've got just a little hook, and I'm going to put that hook up through his mouth like a stringer. And I'm going to smooth out my Elmer's glue. Now, there's people out there saying, why would you go to this much trouble for a crappie because it just seems like a big old hassle. Well, when you get this fish mounted without losing any scales, um, you are going to be ecstatically happy. Much happier than you would be if you didn't. So now, I just take this crappie. I'm going to find a place to hang him back here. And he's just going to hang there and dry and until um, the, first layer, the first coat of Elmer's glue dries, and then I'm going to come in with a second coat of Elmer's glue. <clears throat> One is good, two is fabulous. Um, Much better. But it will take that Elmer's glue eight hours to set up on that fish. Yeah. I don't know of any faster way. You can put the crappie yeah. in the oven. Um, <laughs> we never tried that, and, but I don't think it'd be a good idea. So, <clears throat> Once the crappie has dried, he's going to look like this. Now this is, this is one from this morning, and uh, he's got a, whole, a really nice coat of um, two coats of Elmer's glue on him. He's kind of plastic coated and that Elmer's glue actually bonds to those scales and when I'm going to skin this fish I'm going to be able to skin him and the Elmer's glue is going to hold the scales onto the skin and with a little luck you should be able to skin this fish without losing any scales. Huge hassle? Absolutely. Um, there's nothing instant about this but on a beautiful crappie like this um, I'm going to be able to skin flesh and mount this fish um, without losing the scale. And that's a big fish. We're not getting a replacement for that. Uh, now also you can see where I took, I took uh, tissue paper, like toilet paper, wrapped the fins in it, um, put plastic saran wrap around it, and paper clipped them just because it keeps the fins from drying out a little too much. So while you're making him? your pattern, I will start skinning 
This fish is going to be cut on his right side, correct? He's going that way? Um, we're going that way. We're going, we're going left. left. And I'm going to go, I'm going to show left on this one. Because these two go the same direction. Okay, to start with, um, just like skinning any fish, I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going to make a C cut under the gill cover all the way up to the top of the head. I'm going to go through the cleathrum bone all the way to the base of the tail. And then I'm just going to start skinning with my fish skinning knife like that. And you go ahead and you can explain what you're doing. And gotcha. So I am just finishing up a pattern on these two fish, like Tom said, will go together. So now that we've got a pattern made, I've got the same critical measurements that Tom had mentioned earlier. Um, I'm going to take a length just to reference our cost. Um, this, is, this fish is 17 and a half inches. That's a big fish. Um, and I've taken a couple, a couple measurements. One tip I can give you, especially with a crappie, because we can't trace over around the dorsal and anal fins very accurately because they stand up, um, I've kind of sketched them in place here and down here. And now I want to double check that measurement. So as I was, as I took all my measurements off of this, off of the fish and transferred them down, I double checked from the body to the pattern before I ever wrote a number. So I've got a measurement here from the base of the dorsal to the base of the anal fin. I'm going to set it there and it looks like my pattern is really good. You will notice that I've, I'll take a measurement here from where the meat quits in the dorsal to where the meat quits in the anal fin at the halfway point and you can see I'm a little bit tall. And so I just came back and re-sketched that so that I know my pattern is accurate. Then you can go back to your knowns, double check those. Pretty That's good there. That's that go in a garden? Yeah, they have a red hat. They're garden knowns. And uh, we've got all of those in place. So we know we've got a really good picture of what that fish is going to look like. And so for this one, to give you a little different technique, um, we're going to skin this one with denatured alcohol. And I am just going to take the fish like so. And I'm going to put him in a little pan with some denatured alcohol. And this is going to tighten the skin around those scales. And it's going to allow, allow me to skin it a little easier and without having to worry about losing them. Be very careful because when it tightens it up, it actually dries them out. And so it can dry out your fins just as the Elmer's glue um, and the fan does when we do the Elmer's glue on our fish. So do be careful not to dry these out. But we'll go back and forth from the denatured alcohol on this fish several times. Um, any time, because the alcohol will evaporate, and any time it feels like it's getting a little bit weak, I'll go right back into this bucket of alcohol. I had to look twice. They had this labeled as fuel. I saw that. That's different. We've That's never bought so. fuel from Ace Hardware before. But, um, something you might want to look um, with this fish skinning knife, look at how close I'm able to skin, um, this crappie skin, I don't want to have to go back and flesh and flesh and flesh and flesh and risk losing scales. So in an effort to skin him, I'm trying to keep him as clean as I can and leave as much meat and tissue with the carcass. Caitlin, I'll just show you here. I don't have this bucket full to submerge the fish. I just have enough that when I lean it on an angle, it's covering over half of him, and then I'll just flip him over. I'm going to soak him in here for 
only a couple of minutes. It's not going to take much. Um, you might leave them in there for 10 the first time around. Um, in the interest of time, I'll probably start a little bit early on this one a little soon and just be careful. Um, you're using borax with your, um, with I, your fish. I always have a pan of powdered borax. This isn't the borax like you, you buy in the grocery store. This is fine powdered, almost like um, flour kind of. Yeah. And uh, it's ultra absorbent. It's exceptional for birds. We use it in any of our recipes. And um, I can't skin a fish without it. Me either. I am always dipping my fingers in the borax. So I'm gonna borrow your borax while I'm skinning too. Now, is, is your Elmer's glue sticking to your crappie? Um, for the most part off? it is. It's coming off down here a little bit. And you can see it comes off and it, it leaves a perfect scale impression, almost like a reproduction fish. I was fish. say, we can make a reproduction. Like an impression pad kind of. Yeah. Okay, Kate, I'm gonna take this guy out and try to get caught up to Tom. So my show side was left. I'm gonna cut to the right according to directions. And I'm gonna do exactly what Tom did, um, making this incision down the side. Gonna make a quick cut through that thin membrane and around. Now I'm also gonna take that C cut. Do you care if I take that C cut above the? Oh, I like doing that. Gill? That's a, um, keeps it from tearing. It's kind of handy, and it's an easy so, fix. Um, so what I'm gonna do? Do I care? Is yeah, I'm gonna don't do cut that. this. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this right here. You can see where the gill cover joins. I'm gonna go straight up through that bone up there on top and I'm gonna cut just short of the center line. If for some reason this were to tear, which it, it shouldn't, but if it were to tear, I'm short of the show side. So I'm just gonna go straight up and as I start to skin, that will allow me to lay that skin up without putting a lot of pressure on the forward points of, the, of this crappie skin. I'm just gonna cut through that and go right down the middle, just like Tom did. Now you can, um, some people cut heads off. You can do that. Fins off, you can do all kinds of different things. Got a quick question from Craig Robertson. And uh -oh. he says, hey boys, hope you're well. Can you skin mount fish out of brackish water or only fresh water? Oh, I think you can sure. skin brackish fish, yeah. Sure. Um, I think you can. I think you want to be extra cautious of any oils. Um, some of those, I've seen uh, trout, speckled trout from brackish water skin mounted. Um, yeah, we have. We've done, I've done redfish. Yeah. Jig and Jan is wondering how do you keep the fins from drying out using the, nat the denatured alcohol? I have thought of just painting the scale areas. Um, it, it is a challenge and we're just going to go back and forth and I'll keep, I'll keep a, a spray bottle of water that I spray on here constantly as I'm skinning um, and that will help me considerably when it comes to get uh, thins drying out. Now we have a question on YouTube from Woody and they are wondering if the Elmer's glue washes off. Um, yeah, we're going to take that whole fish skin once he's scraped put him in the sink and that Elmer's glue will turn liquid just like when I put it on and it will I'll be able to peel it off in one whole sheet and it's very fun to do. 
That seems like something Mandy would like. I know. So I'm going kind of slow and careful. My, my denatured alcohol hasn't really tightened me up too much yet, so don't pick on me. Now my goal is to get this fish skin out and then we'll deal, of, deal with details later as far as fleshing and meat and fat. Now that Elmer's glue holds this skin in a nice curvature without a fold and um, it, it just wants to stay, it's springy, it just wants to stay in that shape. I don't, I'm not even worried about it losing scales. Um, for which part? Well, the question <laughs> ends there. <laughs> um, um, now, for any fish that we do, we thaw them, just like these crappies, we thawed them, and then took, we got a little pressure hose in our sink, and we washed them in the direction of the scales so you don't accidentally blow the scales off. So we washed them, got all the slime off, and then um, dried them with a towel and painted them. Yep. And kind of the same with the denatured alcohol. Um, wash them really good, just like you would mount. Inside the mouth, inside the gills, get all the slime off, and then um, dry them slightly and into the denatured alcohol. Same process for both. Holy cow, you're going fast. I don't know about that. <laughs> you are. I'm not going to catch up. Mm. Don't have to catch up. Just no, no scale loss. It is the goal. Now this fish had a damaged spot on the back side, so they're going to see it here in a second. And there's nothing I can do with that. It's always interesting when we, we have to look at student fish really carefully when they're, when they're <sighs> going for the gift certificate. And never fails. They'll get all done and they'll, we'll say, what about this? What about that? And they'll say, that was oh, there. He was that like was that. there. <laughs> so we are pretty careful about looking these fish over real carefully so they don't try to pull the wool over our eyes. Um, the skin and fish, does it, are the Facebook police gonna get us for this like they did that? No, they might. I don't think so. Fish are different? Mm, that's right. Kate, I've got a little something we can show them if you want to. I was just going to show them how the skin lays forward. Now, since I've made this cut right here, the skin just lays forward like that, nice and easy. I don't have to do any, any excessive, um, put any excessive force on to turn it. So just like that. You're almost done. Mm, I'm almost done getting the body out. Yeah. But. Um, for me, that's the most difficult part of preserving the scales is to get the body out without bending him. Now this is all, I can feel, this is all really good skin and the scales are all yeah. um, intact. There's plenty of, plenty of time to do damage, but right now I haven't. Ooh, 
sorry. Now, the skin, that Elmer screw just holds the skin in its position kind of, so I'm just going to carefully bend it back. It's almost like a sheet of plastic on there. And now looking at the show side of this fish, um, I haven't even disturbed, I haven't even disturbed the Elmer's glue. And I'm not going to wash this off yet. I want to do as much scraping as possible um, before I take the Elmer's glue off. So I'm going to make sure that I don't have anything under that fish. I'll take, uh, we do most of our fleshing with a knife. There's a lot of little scraping tools. And carefully, without putting any stress on the skin, I'm going to flesh perpendicular to the length of the fish. And don't get in a rush. You've come this far. Don't get in a rush and get careless. And then we've got Ryan who is wondering what you the, does the Elmer glue do for you if you don't mind him asking. He's a little bit late. Um, the Elmer's glue forms an entire glued-on barrier, like, like a, a skin on top of my scales. And... Um, it is a hassle-y step because I have to I have to paint it on, let it dry, um, paint on another coat, and it take it took for this fish it took all day for the Elmer's glue to set up. If I was doing one crappie, that would be a pain in the rear. You know, yeah. if I'm if I'm painting it and waiting, 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 waiting. But usually when we do fish, we'll have several crappies, we'll have um, a bass, we'll have a pike, we'll have all different kinds of fish. So we'll paint this, hang it in front of the fan, paint another one, hang it in front of the fan, and go about our business mounting the other fish, um, skinning and mounting the other fish. Then all of a sudden, these are ready for their second coat, and um, we'll do the second coat. And lots of times, when I go home at night, my crappie is not ready to skin. So I will actually put them in the refrigerator on a towel and the next morning I take them out of the refrigerator and that Elmer's glue is like in a cocoon. That's kind of the nicest way. In a cocoon. I like that. They too. really they really get good and dry and easy to skin that way. Um, I just put this one back in the denatured alcohol for a few minutes. He really didn't sit very long the first time so I could tell he was really loose and before I get around to the show side I thought I'd better Give them a few more minutes. I mean, you can do that several times over and over again. Yeah, you? yep. Anytime they feel loose, and you'll feel it get loose, and I think that's probably as it um, as it evaporates, comes out of the skin, and oozes out onto the table. Now, I don't want to tell customers this, but we pride ourselves in getting our fish skins meticulously clean, right? Yes, we do. But sometimes when it comes to a crappie, they're not as meticulous as... That's right. And not because we're sacrificing quality, but just because we're, we're more concerned about making sure that we don't do excessive damage. The more you have to scrape, the more chance you have of damage. That last little soap made a big difference. Big difference. This is almost like having this skin fastened to a sheet of vinyl or something. It's yeah. really nice to scrape on. that came in. Uh, the first one is from Brandon Preston, and he is wondering if you reuse the denatured alcohol. 
Um, you could if you were doing a series of fish in the same batch. Um, you could use it from fish to fish. I think it's just going to get a little bit, as we skin further and further, it's going to get a little less pretty. Um, so eventually I think you'd want to throw it out just because of the impurities and so forth from the previous fish. But yeah, you absolutely could. If you wanted to, you could save it, put it back in the gallon jug and keep going. I yeah. think, don't you think? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, we've saved it. We can tell when we take it out of there. It's got yeah. little pieces of fish in it. Um, it actually preserves them too. It's not, it's not like it turns grungy, but it's not as nice as when you bought it either. And then Sean Mabry is wondering, does the mouth dry so it can't be formed the way you like while the glue is drying? No. Um, once, now this fish is dried like gaping, like he's going to eat a big old musky. Um, <laughs> And it's hard. That's that Elmer's glue is holding that, that fish's mouth like that. Once he goes into the sink, and we have a fish pickle that we call it, and uh, I think we've probably done it before. You can look back on our YouTube videos, but it's basically um, water, salt, borax, Protex, pre-soak, and bactericide. Um, once you put it into the fish pickle, all your Elmer's glue is going to peel off in a nice sheet, and then your mouth is gonna go right back to where it was when we took him out of the freezer. It's gonna go right back to pliable. So you can do anything you want with the mouth. And Sam Donner is wondering why you keep dipping your fingers in the borax. Because it gives me grip. I like it. <laughs> Nervous habit. Um, no, I've never been able to skin a fish. I, I go to help yep. students um, the other day and. Um, I said, where's your borax? Oh, I don't have any. I said, I can't skin fish without a borax. I have to, I have to dip my fingers in borax for grip. Is all. It's the only reason. And then Lance Peterson is wondering which method, glue or denator, the DN is better. Is one better for be beginners over the other? Um, you I like think. denatured alcohol. Yeah, but... Denatured alcohol is not foolproof. And it's fast, though. It, it's, it's fast, yeah. Um, this, I think, maybe does a little bit better job to me. Yep. But, man, it's, like I said, eight hours before this crappie was ready yep. to If we're skin. thinking and ahead of, the, ahead of the game and, like Tom said, have several fish out, um, I think you'd Elmer's glue them every time. But... When you're ready to skin fish and you've got four crappies laying on the counter and that's all you got out for the day, mm -hmm. um, we'll use denatured alcohol. And experience, I think, too. Yeah. We've had a lot of experience, so we're a little more careful. Um, we kind of know what we can get away with. And I think the denatured alcohol will work for us. And we've had several successful students before we started the, the oh, Elmer's sure. glue. Um, it just takes time. Just take plenty of time and care and um, white bass too. This mm -hmm. is a, a real nice method for white bass. Both of these, these methods will help you there. And Travis Snyder is wondering if you can flesh the skin with a spoon. Mm. Ooh, boy, I don't know if I would a crappie. I got a lot of stories. <laughs> yes, you do. That's funny. <laughs> um, to me, and you may have a different idea, to me, something sharp and go over it one time. Look at I'm going yep. over this one time, one time, and it's coming spectacularly clean. Now, I have pieces of fish all over the place, but, but it's really coming clean. Now, that's my razor-sharp knife. Compared to a spoon, I'm going to have to go over and over and over and over and over mm -hmm. and over, you know, many, many times. And um, I'm for sure going to do a lot of damage. So to me, a spoon doesn't work very well. Um, I had, have had many calls of students that do something like a, a spoon on a big pike or something like that and actually destroyed it. Um, and then they're looking for another fish. So. Sharp, sharp tools, and don't keep going over them. One time is off. And then Jessica 
Fowler is wondering if you can dehydrate the skin with salt and then skin it. You know, that's oh, another thing. That is, yeah. That's another method that we don't do very often, but a lot of people skin crappies by drying them, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. And drying them with borax or salt, and uh, it actually dries that skin up really, really dry, like washed up on the beach dry, and you're able to um, flush that fish, flush in a dried skin like a piece of bark. In the right hands, it's not out of the question. Um, you gotta, you're gonna have to have experience. I bet Big Dome could do it now. I bet he could, don't you think? Yeah. He's probably done enough. You can do it, Sean. Um, do you have a little receptacle I can put this in? Oh, sure I do. You know, there's people out there that are watching this and they're saying, I have never gone through any of that to skin a crappie and I don't lose any scales. I know, I know. You know, we're kind of gearing this towards the people that can't do that. Yeah, haven't done it, have had challenges or just uh, looking for a little different idea. Lots of different ways to do it. There are, there are some super talented people out there that have other methods. I bet Dan Helmer's watching, not I shaking could. his head, just thinking, what are those I two know. yahoos doing? Dan Helmer's is Mr. Crappie, has done more crappies than anyone I know. Very nice crappies. Brian Schmidt is wondering, um, what is the best way to deal with a freezer burnt fish? Soak it. Yeah. Um, we've, we have mounted, can I borrow your little scraper? Yeah. Um, we have mounted fish that have been in the freezer for 20 years. Um, really? We have had fish that when we put them in the sink, floated so high in the water that they couldn't, couldn't <laughs> yeah. get any water to them. Um, we have had unbelievably, I mean, they're like wood. They're like terrible, terrible freezer burn. And um, we've turned out some exceptional fish from those also. It's kind of like if you want to do it and it's that important to do it, you can do it. Yeah, that's exactly it. If you want to bad enough, you'll find a way. And then Jig and Jim is wondering if you are going to use a replacement head, when would you remove the head? Oh, if I was going to do it, I think I'd take it off right away. Right away, yeah. Yeah, it, it's just one less obstacle. Um, Jim, I think it would be, let's, let's get it out of the way. If you're going to, if you're going to use a replacement, um, do it right away. May as well make it easy on yourself. Same with fins. Any of you that want to take the fins off, um, there's some guys that like to do that. Take them off right away, I think. You know, once you remove the head and the fins, a crappie skin opens up very flat. Yeah. And if you can open them up very, very flat, um, you can really diminish the chances of um, losing scales. Is that it, Kate? No more questions? That is it for now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Had a good run there. I'm gonna we did have a good rinse run. this fish. I'm gonna go over to the sink and I'm gonna gently rinse him. I don't wanna get my Elmer's goo all wet because I don't want, I'm not ready to take it off. Randy Wallace said, maybe I missed it, but do you use the glue on all fish or just crappies? 
No, just crappies. Just crappies. Um, white bass would be another fish that you could benefit from. Um, most fish you don't need to. Um, you wouldn't need to. This is just an added precautionary step. Another helpful little cut. Oh no, I have a long ways to go. Another helpful little cut that you can make um, just to do less um, bending on your tail is you can make a little T cut at the tail if you want to. And I think I might do that with this fish. I'm just going to open that up carefully. Now, those of you that think this is a big hassle to skin a crappie um, and can see the benefits that, yes, it works, but no, I don't want to do it, um, <laughs> I'd, I'd by all means charge more for your fish, for your crappies. Yeah, yeah, anybody that's hesitant because of the cost. Um, that gallon of denatured alcohol, I think, was 16 bucks. Um, so that's not cheap. Um, we used a, less than a quarter, but a less than a quarter of the gallon. But nonetheless, still money you would have wouldn't have spent on other fish. The time to do the Elmer's glue. That's what I mean. Uh huh. That's you're gonna take another. I bet 20, 30 minutes of actual time. Looks like we have a few questions that just came in. Uh, the first one is from Brian Schroeder, and he is wondering how clean should you get all the head and tail areas? What bones should you leave and what bones should you take out? We'll try to get them really clean to a point. Um, I always say when you start doing damage, when you start risking scale, losing scales, um, it's time to maybe maybe leave a little dirtier fish. But um, we actually we actually do a pretty decent job of trying to get it off. And then Andy Stark is wondering if this live feed will be viewable from the beginning, and it will be viewable on both our Facebook page and our YouTube page. From start to finish. And that goes with all of our live summer seminars that we have done. And our YouTube channel is Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company. And Jessica Fowler is wondering if you can use detrinated alcohol on other fish to tighten up the skin. I'm denatured. Um, yes, you sure could. It's mostly not necessary, but yes. Jeremy Pickers is wondering, for a white bass, can you use a crappie form if you can't carve? Ooh. Ooh. They, they're, they're different shape. Yeah, very different shape. I think you'd, I think that would be pretty noticeable. Now, Jeremy was his name. Jeremy, you said you can't carve. Can't carve or just haven't had any success carving yet. Um, Go back and watch our, our YouTubes on carbon bodies and it's, once you have success, you're gonna say, wow, that was not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. We have students here right now that are just, what, three days into fish? Mm -hmm. That were saying the exact same thing a day and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And today are thinking, wow, that's not so bad. Um, it's just time and repetition. And, and when I first started carving bodies, I would carve, oh man, I'd carve three or four bodies for the same fish. And each time I would get mad because it's not fitting. And, but I, I knew I could do it, I just hadn't. And um, 
I'd get mad and I'd do it again and I'd do it again and I'd do it again. And pretty soon you start having a little success and within a couple dozen fish, all of a sudden you're a fish carver. So, and that's exactly how I learned. Tom would get mad and I'd do it again and then Tom would get mad and I'd do it again. That's exactly how I learned. It was the beatings that helped the best. <laughs> We typically sew. Yep. If we had a button body like the great fish on fish forms, <laughs> we would staple. I love stapling. Um, stapling's nice when you've got a good fit and body, um, but these will likely be carved bodies. And, and uh, I mean, stapling we'll is fun. It's <laughs> bang, 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 bang. As long as you have it lined up, don't make sure it's not misaligned. It has to be lined up. Um, I love stapling fish forms. Stephen Eastman is wondering the pros and cons between skin fish to reproduction fish. Mm, lots of, oh lots boy. of different. Um, skin fish, the customer has his fish, which is really important to some of these people. Um, we never used to like reproduction fish because they were so hard for us to make them look like the real fish. The more effort we put into our reproduction fish, they started looking a whole lot nicer. So we love reproduction fish, but there again, they're typically not the customer's fish, not his trophy. Um, they probably will last longer mm -hmm. than a skin mount fish. Although we have fish out in the showroom that are 40 years old, that would still look good in people's trophy rooms. Adequate, maybe they'd look adequate. <laughs> I think they look pretty good. Um, yeah, I think, you know, a lot of that depends upon how you address your customer. Um, you can share with them your thoughts and, and try to convince them one way or the other, but when you, when you really boil it down, these skin mounted fish, there's not much of the real fish there in actuality. After we epoxy all of the shrinkage and rebuild all of the fins and it is the, it is the actual skin, but boy, there's just, you know, a good job of rebuilding. There's not a lot of that, that fish exposed other than the than the skin and then you get into those hybrid fish and you've got even less artificial fins and artificial heads and a little bit of scales in the middle but it's kind of like I always <clears throat> I thought it was silly at the time but but when I started 35 40 years ago um, I would get sailfish in Marlon I think we talked about it last week um, from Mexico and they they'd get broken in transit and the customers want them fixed up. So they bring them in and as I'm working on these fish taking them apart, the dorsal fin and the tail are cardboard. Um, they have texture on them made of plaster. Um, the little uh, pelvic feelers are, are cardboard or wire. Um, the fish itself was all artificial except for the triangle, a triangle down the show side of the fish. So they really we're doing hybrid fish 40 years ago, <laughs> and we thought how silly they were. Yeah. And now we're doing it. And now we're doing the same thing. Um, I guess whatever it takes for you to turn out the best memory for that customer of, of that fishing trip. Um, we have a student in class now, and he has a pretty extensive showroom I think you know of all his trophies that he got and he was commenting the other day he said you know I I look at this bird and I remember exactly the day that I shot it and what the weather was like and who I was with and what we went through to get these birds and this fish when we caught that and that's kind of what it's all about whatever brings yeah. back that memory to you you know in the best manner and looks good um, if that fish looks so bad or is leaking grease or um, who knows what all can happen to fish. Um, 
maybe the memory wouldn't be so good as it if it were a real right. neat reproduction. Absolutely, that's, you know, I, I think there's a big difference there between a, just a crappy skin mount and a well done skin mount. I guess I'd rather have a reproduction than a poorly mounted skin. We used to do monster batches. We used to use, we used to do, I used to do you 100 fish do, at a yeah. time, huge <laughs> used batches. To do big batches. Um, they were not the fish like we do now. But uh, typically our method would be make a pattern, um, skin the fish, and then we like to salt them lightly, put them in the freezer, and do another fish, put, it in the, put the skin, one skin right on top of another with the tags. And um, so we'll have in a tub, we will have, oh, I don't know, 25, 30 fish skins. And when we are ready to do fish, we'll carve all the bodies. We'll have all the bodies laying back here on the paint table. Um, and we haven't test fitted them, but they should be pretty close. And then we will take out a pile of fish skins, put them in the pickle, um, our fish pickle. And once they're ready to go, and they don't have to be in the fish pickle too long, a, a fish like this would be an hour would be a great plenty. And um, we'll get out the body, test fit it, mount it, go to the next one, go to the next one, go to the next one. Um, when that batch of fish is done, we'll take another pile out of the freezer. Um, so that's kind of our method. We tend to do smaller batches than we ever did. We used to do, not that we have less fish, we have more fish than ever, but um, the batches, we just do them smaller batches. Jonas Thompson says, I have heard of skinning crappie half frozen and that keeps the scales tight. Have either of you tried that method or know more about that method? You know, in my, I have not. In my mind though, the first thing that's gonna thaw out is the outside, is the skin. And so half frozen means frozen in the middle and thawed out here. That's what I'd which be afraid is, of. Which is where, yeah, which is where I would fear that you'd have issues. Um, sounds good if there's something that somebody's doing a little bit different there. That the, that's one thing, and we even talked about that today with students. There are a thousand different ways to do this, and we're showing you one or two of them. Um, but in the right hands, I bet that's a perfectly sure, adequate sure, method. Sure, sure, sure. But uh, just off the top of our head, that I. I <clears throat> Feel like there's a few little holes in that theory. And Tim Wasterek is wondering if you could use the meat of the fish to create the shape of the form. I, I've always found it hard. Is that fair? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The idea is great, but the fish meat doesn't hold its shape. It might get you into the ballpark, but um, that's always been difficult for me. Yeah. I think, um, and especially with a crappie where we may not take it all the way to the base of the tail at first, we may not go all the way into the head at first. Um, a bass maybe, maybe something real tight skinned or a walleye that you could really skin super close um, would give you some help. But um, yeah, I think, I think that might be kind of tough. Jesse Boysing says, never done a fish yet and haven't researched, but this is getting me interested. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. Scales lose color and need painted, or is there no painting necessary? Oh, lots of painting. Oh, lots, lots and of lots painting. of painting. Yeah. Yep. And that's the fun part of doing fish is, I, I think, is we do all this just so we can just have so a we chance can paint. to paint. Yeah. <laughs> to add more fish forms anytime soon. The I was I wondering used. that too. Frank, you must have talked to Mandy or Tom. Um, <laughs> the ones he's used, what was he gonna say, are he, probably the best ones he's ever used. He says the ones <laughs> I've your used of script. yours are great. They fit like a glove. No. Yeah, they um, do fit like a glove. They are good. We appreciate that, Frank. Um, gosh, it, if there were, 
10 more hours in every day or one more day in the week, I would say we'd love to. I just can't right. seem to get from here to there. I think Joe has got that under control with this $15 an hour minimum wage. He's going to oh, add more hours. That's right. Add more hours at $15 an hour minimum. <laughs> oh my gosh. We didn't just open that can of worms, did we? <laughs> we're going to get, we're definitely going to get kicked off of Facebook now. <laughs> uh, but I think we would just, um, I haven't caught up to Tom yet, but um, you can see we, we are able to work with these fish, get the bodies out. Um, you're about done. Um, <coughs> and very, very little, if any, damage at all um, to the skin. Hopefully that gave some people some ideas. Now you can see that uh, I, now I haven't been overwashing this fish because I don't want my Elmer's glue to come off quite yet. Um, but you can see where it's starting to peel up. My scales are still fine, but my Elmer's glue coating is peeling up. So pretty soon, I probably won't do it tonight since it's so late, but I will um, take this fish tomorrow morning and I'll soak him in water and I will peel this off. I have um, tissue paper on his, on his fins and I will make sure that um, the fins are in pretty good shape. And uh, We'll take all this off. Wow, we've got Benoit Paquette from Quebec who says they stopped taxidermy 15 years ago and you make him want to start over. <laughs> oh no, because we're, we're uh, showing him all the things that we're doing wrong so he can fix them. <laughs> um, that's exciting. That's fun. You know, we kind of, I don't know, I shouldn't speak for you, but I kind of get excited. We're working with students and they're going through real fast tanning processes and um, we've moved today into fish or a few days ago into fish and it does the same thing for me too. Um, kind of makes me want to get out of fish. We're so busy with other stuff you kind of forget some of these things. YouTube is wondering, on a Palomino trout, how can you fix a color problem? The fish was yellow, and they came back orange. Palomino trout? Um, Palomino trout, um, this, how did it come back? Did it, I'm wondering do you think they had it done? I, I, I'm wondering. Um, if it was mounted, the skin typically will turn pretty orange. If it was not painted to restore the color that it was, um, I'm sure you have that orange cast underneath, and um, it would take a whole new paint job, I think. Yeah, I think that's what it sounds like. It would came back. Sounds like it's been to the taxidermist already. And I'm not sure if this is a question or a comment, but we're going to take it as a question. <laughs> Sturt's taxidermy says you put that fish in the refrigerator for the night and then wash tomorrow. Or I could do it tonight. Okay. I could do it tonight too. But, but that's what I plan on doing. I'm going to take it just like this. I'm going to fold him up, lay him nice and flat. I'll probably slide him in a plastic bag so he doesn't get too dried out. And I'll put him in the, in the uh, refrigerator tomorrow morning. I'll pull him out when we're here, throw him in the sink, and all of this will peel off really nice. And his... His skin should be in pretty good shape. Keith Carroll is wondering if you fix broken or split fins or leave in the original condition. We typically fix a lot. We fix. Um, we fix, and that's most split fins were not split when the fish was healthy. Um, a lot of times it's due to catching them. A lot of times it's due to nets. A real healthy fish has beautiful, beautiful fins, much like a butterfly wing to me. And uh, so, so unless there's a reason to leave it split, like a bass that's been um, fanning his nest, or, or maybe a bluegill, or um, musky, our muskies a lot of times will do damage to their tail. If it's something that adds character to the fish, we'll maybe leave it. If it's something that 
detracts from the overall look of the fish, we'll maybe fix it. And we got a giveaway? Yes, we do. This week's giveaway, we are giving away the cheek scraper. I should have washed it. <laughs> we're not giving away this one, we're giving hey, away you brand better new, not. Yeah, don't give that one, one away. That one's uh, mine. This is a great little tool, and this will fit in everything from a crappie on up, maybe a little bit, uh, a bluegill or a sunfish, maybe a big one. But uh, any bass size that's serrated all the way around, this is a great tool. This week's giveaway goes to Randy Shanklin, and Randy won by liking and sharing last week's live. So make sure to like and share tonight's live to be entered in next week's giveaway on Thursday. Um, way to go, Randy. You're going to like it. It's great for getting into detail areas of fish. Um, exceptional for especially eyes and cheeks. Yeah. Um, I've used that for a lip tucker. Yeah, for it mammals. works. In, yeah, it, it works pretty good. I I like that tool. It's, it's a little serrated, but it's not so aggressive that it's going to cut holes. It is a good yeah. lip tucker. Thanks for joining us. Come again next week. <laughs>